Hi, Mr. Petrol here, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how we can use an oscilloscope to measure alternating potential difference. So, we know that UK mains electricity is an alternating current and it's got a frequency of 50 hertz, that means it alternates its direction 50 times every second. And we know there's a mains potential difference, a mains voltage of 230 volts. But if we didn't know that, how could we actually determine this to ourselves? Well, we could actually use a piece of kit called an oscilloscope, which you may have seen lying around the lab, that's one there. Okay, an oscilloscope produces a trace that can be used to measure the peak potential difference and the frequency of an AC power supply. So that is an oscilloscope. So an oscilloscope actually works by producing one of these things, which is called an oscilloscope trace. And the um, height of the peaks of this wave that are being produced and the wavelength between them and the amplitude, all these things here I can use to determine the properties of that um, mains voltage, okay? but you've got to learn how to interpret what this actual trace here shows you. So how do we do that? So this is what we might see. It's an oscilloscope trace, and the peak voltage shown on this trace is just a little tiny bit over 5 volts. Well, how do I know that? Well, it's because I have controlled something called the Y gain. Okay, And the Y gain is controlled by this set of controls down here. So what this basically does is this sets the scale of my y axes my up and down axes on my oscilloscope trace okay so if we have a little look over here we can see that i have set my oscilloscope uh, y axes to a number two there okay i'll put it in there just a bit bigger so you can see the little white bit of the uh, knob is pointing to the number two and what that actually means is that i have set the oscilloscope to measure two volts per centimeter so each one of these little squares here is a centimeter so each one of those squares i've said it's two volts per centimeter each little square is worth two volts and if we have a little look here there's one two two and a half and a bit ish squares there so if each square is worth two volts we can do a quick calculation there two volt centimeters times by two and a half centimeters or two and a half squares gives me a um voltage of Five volts. So I've been able to read that oscilloscope trace. So this is another oscilloscope trace, but for exactly the same um, power supply, I've got it connected to, and this is still telling me that the power supply is a little bit over five volts. Okay, it's exactly the same message, but if you have a little look over here at my Y gain settings, this time I've changed it. It's not on two like it was last time. The little knob is now pointing to five volts per centimeter. So we can say that each one of these squares is now worth 5 volts. So you can see over here now that the uh, peak of the wave is just a little bit over the top of the first square. So again, it's about 5 volts. It shows me the same thing. I've just changed my settings, but this is actually still showing me exactly the same thing. And that's all just because I've changed the Y gain setting on the oscilloscope. So that is the Y gain and peak voltage, but I can also use an oscilloscope to work out the frequency of my supply. And from looking at this oscilloscope trace here, I can see that the frequency of the supply here is 50 hertz. How do I know? Well, it's all to do with another set of controls, okay? Because here, each square on my X axis, and that's what I'm interested in this time, the X axis going across the bottom is measuring my um, frequency. I know that each square on my X axis is worth two milliseconds, okay? So I've got a measurement of two milliseconds. If you look up here on this control up here, which is actually called the um, time-based control. If you look on this control here, you can see that it is set to two milliseconds. I've noted it up there. So that means that each one of my squares on my X axis is actually worth two milliseconds. So if I take a point on a wave and I count my way along to the next similar point on the next wave there, so it's gone through one complete oscillation back to its starting point again, I'll actually count there that um, I've gone by about nine and a half squares, okay? Like I said, each square is worth two milliseconds. I times that by nine and a half squares. So that tells me that the um, cycle of the wave takes 19 milliseconds, or I can also record that in seconds as well, 0.019 seconds. So that is telling me how long each wave cycle is taking. So I've used that oscilloscope trace to show me that the um, each cycle of the wave takes 0 0.019 seconds or 19 milliseconds. That means the same thing. Okay, but that's not the frequency, is it? No. 
but I can calculate the frequency using the same equation that I have used previously to calculate the frequency of um, any wave. So basically, the frequency is 1 divided by the time for one cycle. So let's just have a little um, think about that a second. OK, um, I know the time of one cycle. We've just worked that out. I just want to know how many cycles actually fit into one second. So I just divide my one second that I've got here. There's my one second. I divide that by my time for one cycle. OK, so if I actually do that calculation there, I've got one second divided by the time for one cycle. And one divided by 0 0.019, if you do that little bit of mass there, is actually 52 hertz. And I said that I thought my supply was about 50 hertz. And using the oscilloscope trace, I have worked out that the actual um, frequency of that supply was 52 hertz. So in summary, we can use one of these things up here, an oscilloscope, to measure the peak voltage and the frequency of a supply based on one of these things, which is an oscilloscope trace. OK, I know the peak voltage of my supply because I can use the Y gain control on my oscilloscope to set the number of volts per centimetre. So I know exactly, you know, I know if each square is worth a certain number of volts, I can count the squares. That tells me the peak voltage at the size. OK, I can control and I can set the time based control on the bottom, which basically tells me the time interval for each square in milliseconds. So I can work out the, how long it takes for each wave cycle to go from one point to the start of the same point on the next wave there. I can measure that in milliseconds, convert it to seconds, and I can use that to calculate the frequency. OK, um, how do I calculate the frequency? Well, I just do it using that little um, calculation there. The frequency of my main supply is equal to one divided by the time for each cycle to take place. So that is how we can use an oscilloscope trace to investigate an alternating current. Any problems, don't hesitate to email me or tweet me at Mr underscore Pepperell and I'll get back to you ASAP. Thanks for stopping by.